sing how you love me. How you love me. It is amazing. It's amazing. Sing, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. Say, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He called me. Lord of glory, you have called me friend. Come on, one voice to the Father. Sing God Almighty. God Almighty. He is the Lord of glory. Lord of glory. And you call me a friend. You have called me friend. Sing it again. Sing God Almighty. Come on, if you believe it, lift your voice one more time, church. Sing God Almighty. God Almighty. He is the Lord of glory. Lord of glory. And you call me friend. You have called me friend. Lift your voice, sing God Almighty. God Almighty. He is the Lord of glory. Lord of glory. And you call me God. Amen. He calls me friend. Yes. Stand with me as we welcome the presence of God into this place. Our Father, Lord, we're so grateful, Lord, because you saw fit to, for us to be here today, Lord God. You saw fit for us to fellowship together today, Lord God. We pray, Lord, that your spirit be with each and every one of us today, that you fill this place, 
that we'll leave here knowing that God was truly here. Father God, we pray that you, you be with the speaker of the hour and that you bless this service from end to end. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I can't hear you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. All right, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Dr. Aaron McKenzie, and I have been a member of Goshen Seven-Day Adventist Church for I don't even know how many years, and we won't count the years, but we are glad that you have chosen to be here at the Goshen Seven-Day Adventist Church. Do we have any visitors? If so, you are welcome to stand, wave your hand so we can formally acknowledge you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You are truly indeed welcome here at Goshen. And if you can take out your cell phones and text the word welcome to 773-733-010. Or you may contact us using the email at goshen 7 day Adventist at gmail.com. Let me not forget to welcome those of you that are visiting us via our, our live stream, uh, Facebook. You can find us there at Goshen SDA on Facebook. Would you please stand and welcome each other and welcome God into this place. Welcome to Goshen, where the worship birds arise. Welcome to Goshen, let's live. Good morning, good morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. amen. Now let's try that again. If you're really happy and you know, why don't you say praise the Lord? Uh, somebody ought to give God praise for all that he has done for us because God has so seen it fit that all of us uh, are alive and well. And I just want to make sure that you're welcome, know that you're welcome in this place. Good to see some f uh, familiar faces, and there's a, a good set of folks. I just want to welcome you 
wherever you're from. I'm glad that you're here with us today. And uh, I praise God that you will have a great time uh, with us today. Uh, and, and for those who are here from different places, we're glad that you chose this place to worship. You could be anywhere else, but the fact that you chose this place to worship on this day, it's a great day. And I know we will have a great day praising God. And good to see you. Good to see you. And good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. So I want you to know that today you can sit back, relax, and you can have a good worship experience. Amen? Amen. Take your shoes off. This is where you can experience authentic worship. You don't have to put on anything to worship God. You just worship God just the way you are. Because God has done something for you this week that only you can testify of how good he has been. And no one else can testify of how good God has been. So that's the reason why you can worship him anywhere. And this is the place that you can feel free to worship God. So I just want you to feel welcome and know that we're glad that you are here. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the all world. All right, all right, come on down. Thank you. Y'all look so nice today. Red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Thank you. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. How are you today? Isn't it exciting to be at church? It is. Well, um, does how old are you? You're five. Okay, and how about you? How old are you? You're 10. Okay. Does anybody know what the word sin means? Sin means that the whole world is really on trees. Okay. Okay. Did you know that we were all born in sin? So let me just ask you a question. Have you ever been naughty? That is good. That is really good. We can all be like that. <laughs> well, I know sin can be 
when you're misbehaving or when you're running in church and your mommy or your daddy says, stop running in church, stop running in the hallway at school, right? He still did it anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, what I want you all to know is that because we were born into sin, because we know that we're going to sin, God gave his only son who was free from sin to wash away all of our sins. Isn't that wonderful? Because he knew that we were going to run in the hallways or we were going to be upset about something and do something we shouldn't do, right? And so he said, you know what? I'm going to have my son die on the cross for each and every one of our sins so that we can be made new. And so whenever we sin, whenever we do something that we shouldn't do, it's okay to go to Jesus and ask for forgiveness by praying, right? Okay. So let me just show you what it means to be free from sin. So this is us when we were born. It looks nice and crystal clear and clean, like you can drink it, right? Okay. Mm hmm. Just like water. And this is Jesus. Mm hmm. So here's just a little demonstration so you can understand what it means to have sin in your life. So this is when we don't obey our mommies and our daddies or when we fight with our brother and sister or we misbehave in school. You see what happens? It turned red. And you don't want to drink that, right? Okay. <laughs> and this is Jesus who was free from sin. you, Jesus. <laughs> okay. And so this is what happens when we pray and ask God for forgiveness for our sins. And look how we've become made new all over again, right? Amen. Amen. Thank you for Jesus. Can I have two people to pray? Let's close our eyes and bow our heads. So, that's the only way to mix colors up is with all the colors. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Our Father will protect us everywhere. He will help us be good. He will help us listen to him every day. Amen.
Now quietly go back to your seats. Thank you. Praise God. Amen. Don't we all want to be cleansed like that? Amen. <laughs> Amen. That was, that was wonderful. Yes, yes. See, there's so many things to praise God for, isn't there? He can cleanse us. He can cleanse us. He's worthy. He's a God we can go to. He's a God that we look, for, look forward to. You know, they call us Seventh-day Adventists. That means we're waiting for an advent. That means we're waiting for Christ's coming. That means we don't, we, oh, well, you, we're not afraid of his coming. We're excited about his coming. Amen. Amen. And we got a God that's coming back for his people. So I, I praise, that was the thing I praise God for this morning. Amen. I'm going to read out of 1 Chronicles 16, 23 and 24. It says, sing to the Lord. All the earth Hallelujah. proclaim his salvation yes. day after day. Yes. It says, declare the glory among the nations. Hallelujah. It says, his marvelous deeds among all people. Yes. And it says, let the heavens rejoice. Yes. Let the earth be glad. Let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Amen. Amen. Let us worship together. Amen. Hallelujah. The God we serve is mighty. He is mighty in battle. He is strong and mighty. He is our strong deliverer. He is our shield and our buckler. So can we just stand to our feet and just begin to lift our hands and just begin to thank God for being mighty. Father, we thank you for being an ever-present help in the time of trouble. Father, we thank you for showing yourself to be mighty, Father. We thank you that you are mighty in everything that you do. We thank you that you are able in everything that you are do. We thank you and we praise you because you are the sovereign God, because you are the only wise God, because you are the only true and living God. So we've come to lift our hands and bless you today, Father, for you are mighty. We thank you, Jesus. The song says this. I know who saved me. I know who raised me. His name is Jesus, and He's mighty. He's mighty. Come on, let's sing together. Sing. I know who saved me. I know who saved. Me. I know who raised me. I know who raised. Me. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus, and He's mighty. And he's mighty. He's mighty. Come on, let's sing it again. Sing, I know who saved me. I know who saved me. I know who raised me. I know who raised me. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And he's mighty. And he's mighty. He's mighty. He's Come on, let's sing it one more time from your heart. Church. Sing, I know who saved me. I know who saved me. And I know who raised me. Lift your voice and worship the Lord. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Yeah, the angels declare your glory. Yeah. Father, 
All creation sings a song to you. Oh, oh, sing, I know who kept me. I know who saved me. He never left me. He never left me. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And he's mighty. And he's mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. Sing, I know who kept me. I know who kept me. He never left me. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And he's mighty. And he's mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. Let your voice sing I know who kept me. I know who kept me. He never left me. He never left me. His name is Jesus. you grateful for that today? I know who can me. Listen, and he's a keeper. Yes, he is. He's a keeper. Yes, he is. And he's a keeper. He's a keeper. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's a keeper. He's a keeper. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And he's a He's a keeper. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's a keeper. He's a keeper. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Sing it. He's a keeper. He's a keeper. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's a keeper. He's a keeper. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's a keeper. He's a keeper. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's a keeper. He's a keeper. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Keep her. 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 Keep her.
keeper we thank you for being our sustainer come on can we take 30 seconds just to let thanksgiving begin to flow out of our mouths come on just begin to tell them thank thank you for keeping us from last sabbath to this day no hurt harm or danger has become us our week may have been hard but he kept us through it all (laughs) our week may not have gone it the way we wanted it to go but he kept us through it all Come on, if you're grateful for the keeping power of the Holy Ghost, just begin to lift your voice and bless him. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. Oh. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Song says... God Almighty, Lord of glory, for we worship you. Come on, sing it, church. God Almighty, say, oh, oh, we sing, oh, oh, oh. Come on, let's sing it together. Sing, God Almighty. God Almighty. Lord of.
and listen in hearts of it. We cry, oh, 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 oh. Sing, Lord, we bow at your feet and oh, worship. We worship you. From our hearts we cry, oh, 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 oh. oh God, we worship oh, you. We worship Come on, let's do it again. You. We cry. deserves our worship. E.M. Bounds said, what the church needs today is not more machinery or better, not new organizations or more and more novel methods, but men whom the Holy Ghost can use. Men of prayer, men mighty in power. The Holy Ghost does not flow through methods, but through men. He does not come on machinery, but on men. He does not anoint palms, but men of prayer. What the world needs and what the church needs is men and women of, of prayer. A heart that is prepared to, to receive the Holy Spirit is much better than a sermon. A prepared heart will pave the way and prepare the mind and the being for the sermon. That's why we come together that's why we come to seek the Lord in prayer. Because prayer is the key in the hand of man that opens the heart of God. Without prayer, we're nothing. Without prayer, we would fail. So therefore, the church should pray. It's all, I'm always baffled and wonder why is it that people are not praying as much as they should. 
Because if you understand that prayer is the powerful tool that can move uh, the hand of God, then we ought to be praying. Because I don't know about you, but I sure want God's hands to continue to move in my life. It is Jabez that said in First Chronicles, Oh, bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. And I don't know about you, but I sure want God to enlarge my territory. But for, before you get all excited on, on what Jabez was asking for, what Jabez was asking God for was more work. Uh, 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 Jabez was asking God, he was saying, God, give me more ministry. Give me more work. I want to work for you. So when, when we're asking God to enlarge our territories, we're asking God to give us more work so that we can work for him and so that Jesus can come back very soon. I, I don't know about you today, but I want Jesus to come. And it's a prepared heart. Man of prayer that paves the way for God to do some mighty things. A story was told of a young man in Germany. And there he was, a Christian young man. And at the time, they were raiding homes trying to find out who were Christians in the home. You know, we've got it pretty easy here. And from home to home, there was this young man in this home, and, and he was a Christian, and so he was, being, he was being hired by the Jews, this Jewish family. And they came into that house that day, and they asked, is there any Christians in this home? And the lady stood at the door, and she said, well, if I say there's no Christians, then I'm lying. But if I say there's a Christian in the home, then I'm actually giving this young man up to death. So she paused a moment and she said, God, what shall I say? And in that time, the Holy Ghost downloaded something in her mind. And she said, when they asked her forcefully, is there a Christian in the home? She said, come and see. You can search the house. And the Gustavos, they ran into the home and they opened the closet and they searched the house. The young man was hiding in the very closet that they opened. And when they opened the closet, they shut the door and they walked out the house. They didn't see the young man in the closet. You see, when we pray... God can even blind the eyes of the enemy. Uh, when we pray, God can cause things to happen in our lives. So we ought to be a people of prayer. We ought to be praying. This is prayer time. This is the time that you can bring your petitions before the throne of grace. So if you have a need this morning and you want God to do something for you, I want to invite you to come meet me at the altar. There's room at the altar. Meet me at the altar. We'll take hands together. And those of you who can't make it, I want to invite you to kneel right where you are as we seek the Lord in prayer. We're calling upon a God, a God who can do the impossible. So if you've got some impossible situations going on in your life today, I declare that God is able to move those impossible situations. God is able to set you free from those impossible situations. So just come to the altar as we seek the Lord in prayer. Wherever you are, would you kneel with me or stand or uh, however, whatever works for you. But I'm going to kneel before the Lord, my maker. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the presence of the Lord. 
So sweet Holy Spirit, come fill us. Heavenly Father, we, your vessels broken, come bow before your throne this morning. God, we come before you because we have no other help. God, we seek your face this morning because we need you to bless us. We need you to enlarge our territories. We need you, God, to remove every ounce, every miniature self that we put up before you. Remove self, God, so that you can be magnified and glorified in your children today. Lord, I pray for everyone in this congregation. I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit may fill their lives. I pray, God, that you will remove any doubt in from their minds that you are not able to do some, in, some, to do some things that are, seem impossible because we serve a God who specializes in impossibilities. So, Father, we come before you this morning. Seeking a healing from you. Someone needs a touch from you. So I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will heal them. Someone, oh God, needs a financial blessing. I pray, God, that you will supply all of their needs according to your riches in glory. Someone needs a husband. Someone needs a wife. Someone just needs you to touch them because, God, they feel so lonely at this moment. Father, and I pray that you will touch them with your mighty hands. God, someone just needs direction. What is their next move? They don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. But, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will show them clearly the next move, where you want them to go, what you want them to do. And I pray, Father, that they will follow your direction. Oh, God, I pray for the man of the hour. I pray for your servant, your manservant. God, I pray that you will lay, lay, lay him down, put him down. Lord, I pray that you will walk over him. I pray, oh God, that you will stand up on him. I pray that you will stand in him, and I pray that you will speak through him. Because the words that you have given him is not his word, but your words. And it's somebody we need to hear from you today. So, God, I pray that, I pray that we will hear from you. Oh, God, and lastly, I'm asking that the enemy that took some CTA bus to make it in this place today. I pray that that enemy, the enemy of our soul, the devil, I pray in the name of Jesus that he will flee from this place. Lord, because he has no, no lot, no, he has no part. This is not his home. God, and we are surrendering ourselves to you, asking you to have your way in our lives. God, we pray for a mighty move of your Holy Spirit. We pray, God, that you will move in this place as you have never moved before. We pray, God, that when we leave this place, we will leave here rejuvenated. We will leave here with a glow on our face. And when someone asks us, why are we glowing? Why are we so happy? We'll be able to say to them that we have met Jesus, that we have been with Jesus, and that you have changed our lives, and that you have done something miraculous in our lives. Oh, God, we need you today. We need you in a special way. So have your way in this place today. Oh, Father, and I pray for this city. I pray, oh, God, that you will continue to keep your hand of protection over this city. There's so many people are losing their lives, God. And so I pray that you will protect your children. I pray that your Holy Spirit will continue, that the four angels that are holding the four winds of strife, I pray, God, that they will hold on just a little longer till all of your children have been sealed with a seal of the living God. Oh, Father, at the end of the day, our greatest desire is to be with you in glory. We want nothing else but to look upon your lovely face. 
We want nothing else but to look up and say, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he is here to save us. So, mighty Father, would you please save your children? And we give you praise, and we give you thanks, and we give you glory for what you have done for us, for your salvation. God, we praise you this morning. We lift you up. We magnify your name. We glorify your name because you alone are worthy to receive all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. No one else is worthy. So we thank you and we praise you. We magnify your name today. We glorify your name. Someone came here, God, with a burden. And we're thanking you and we're giving you praise that even right now you're lifting that burden. Someone came in here, oh God, disturbed in their mind, but even right now you're lifting that disturbance. Someone came in here, God, don't know what they came here for, don't even know why they're here, but oh God, right now in the name of Jesus, we give you praise because you're giving them direction, you're giving them focus, you're refocusing their minds, and so God, we praise you. For what you are doing, we praise you, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We praise you, Jehovah Nishi. We praise you for all of the things that you have done for us. Oh, for 10,000 towns, we cannot give you enough praise, God. So we just humbly say thank you. Thank you for your saving grace. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for sending your son to die for us. Thank you, God, that we can come before your throne boldly, seeking grace, seeking mercy in the time of our need. Thank you, Father. Lord, we'll be careful to give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory after all that you've done for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we say thank you. We say praise you. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say praise God. Victory belongs to us. Victory in the name of Jesus. Victory in the name of Jesus. We've got the victory. Satan tries to bind us, but thank God we've got the victory. Satan tried to wrap us, but thank God, he has got us through the power of Jesus, has broken the chains that have us bind. Victory belongs to God's children. Today, a victory is ours. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. So first of all, um, I guess I'll start here. Surprise! <laughs> um, so those people over there, well, let me start here. For seven years, I had the opportunity to serve at the great OCC, Oakdale Covenant Church. So every now and then, I always go over there and I pop up and I say hi and, you know, go and sing and love on them because they love to love on me. So today they said, how about we go find Nick and we go love on him? So they came to love on us. Because if anybody loves on y'all, they love on me. And if they love on me, they love on y'all. So can we celebrate them for coming to love on us? Hallelujah. So Oakdale, y'all come on. And here's the thing. I already know TJ going to do it. TJ's motto for I think his whole life now is better together. So Goshen, praise team, y'all come on, y'all gonna sing too. Y'all come on, this is y'all surprise, come on, surprise. Um, yeah, come on. Oh, and oh, by the way, if you were in the ensemble, if you have ever sang at Goshen and you wanna get up in this choir, if you have never sang at Goshen and you wanna get in the choir, so first lady, that means you, come on. Yes, Dana, come on. Um, Shirley, come on. Come on, y'all, y'all, I don't, the, the, the door will be all right. Y'all come on and sing. Praise the Lord. Right. 
All right, let's do this. Uh, sopranos over here, altos over here, tenors in the middle. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, how many glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? We are grateful to be here and also to celebrate black excellence, uh, to celebrate our heritage and our history. Uh, and while Nick was transitioning from Oakdale, somebody said, we're going to take him from Oakdale. I say, no, nah, because we coming with him wherever he go. And so we are grateful to be here with you. Uh, and we're just going to lift Jesus this morning. Is that all right? We're family and we're going to be better together. Let's lift up the name of the G The name of the Lord. Now everybody clap your hands. Hey. There you go. Clap your hands. Come on, let's lift Jesus. Hey. Let's go right here. Lord, I lift your name on high. I lift your name on high. Yeah. Lord, I love. Lord, I love to sing your praise. Yeah, and I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. And I'm glad you came to save us. I'm so glad you came to save us. Say it again, Lord, I lift your name. Lord, I lift your name on high. Yeah, and Lord, I love to sing love your praises. Sing your praise, yeah. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm glad. You came to save us. So Come on, let's take it out. Oh, 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 you came from heaven, came from heaven to show the way show from the way earth to the cross. The earth, my debt you paid. Hey, from the, from, the from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name. Yeah. Come on, clap your hands and lift up Jesus. Come on, let's say it again. Hey, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Yeah, and Lord, I love. Lord, I love to sing your praise. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. Y'all sound good. I'm glad you came to save us. I'm so glad you came Come on. To save us. Oh! Lift him higher. Lift him higher. Lift him higher. 
lift him higher. Say yes. Yes. Say 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 yes. Now everybody clap y'all. Come on, let's lift Jesus. Hey. Hey. Come on, say lift him higher. Jesus for the, Go the Oakdale Goshen Mass Choir. We can bless the name of the Lord because when all God's children get together, we're going to have a time, whether it's on Saturday or on Sunday, when we get together to bless the Lord, God moves on our behalf and he moves in the midst. So come on, everybody, clap your hands. Let's lift up Jesus. Hey! Just, just before, I just wanna, I just wanna thank God for allowing you all to come and worship with us today. And, and, and I want you to take our regards. I would like for you to take our regards back to Dr. Griffin. Let him know that we surely appreciate the fact that he allowed you all to come and worship, and we're so grateful. For, for this fellowship together. So I know right now he is, he is away, but we thank God that he, he sends his greetings to the Goshen family, and we just want to make sure that he receives greetings back from us. Praise the Lord, everybody. I know that the Spirit is in here. If you don't feel it, there's something wrong. You need to check yourself. As we continue in our worship, I invite you just to stand on your feet, if you would, and grab your Bibles. I'm going to read just a short passage of Scripture this morning, coming from the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 27. We're going to read verse 6. That is 2 Chronicles chapter 27, verses 6. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer. Nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. One more time. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. 2 Chronicles chapter 27, verse 6 says, 
So Jotham became mighty because he ordered his ways before the Lord his God. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we call upon you right now simply to say thank you for bringing your presence in this place. As you move, God, we're asking that you touch every heart. You touch every mind. Fill us until we can't take any more. Cover us in your blood. Reveal to us your perfect word. And by the transformation that we will receive here, we promise, O oh God, that our steps will be ordered by you because we've opened the door to let Jesus do what only he can do. We thank you for what you've done in this place and what you will do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. This morning I would like to speak to the brothers, if that's all right. Now, ladies, please don't think that you are excluded from the message today. But I just want to have a little conversation with the men this morning. And as we do so, I have a question to ask all of you this morning. What is your definition of a good man? In some cases, it depends on whom you are asking and the attitude of the person for who is being questioned. Sometimes men are often judged by a variety of standards that fluctuate depending upon outwards and inward circumstances. Everyone seems to have a different definition of a good man. If you ask a woman to describe a good man, she may respond that a good man is one who is a protector and a provider and a progenitor or a model. If you ask a man to describe a good man, he may respond that a good man is one who is strong, dark, handsome, sure, and secure. On the sociological order, a man is one who is a strong presence in his family. One who loves his wife, protects and defends his family, and makes provisions for their sustenance, education, and future. On the social order, a good man is one who demonstrates leadership in his home before his wife and children. On the sociological order, a good man is one who has a commanding physical presence. His manhood is determined only by his physical strength or his ability to reproduce. On the physical order, a man is not a man if he is weak in strength. If you ask a man in this order to open a jar, he is able to do it easily. On the intellectual order, a good man is one who is smart, calculating, and is able to think outside the box. Someone who can outwit and outsmart opponents in any area where intellect and learning is essential. A man who has strength but not brain is considered a jock and he is less than a man in intellectual circles. 
historically African-American men have been considered good men. Despite slavery and second-class citizenship, the African-American man has stood tall to meet the standard of manhood in all categories. Our men have protected their wives and children against slaveholders, Klansmen, and others that would destroy them even to the point of sacrificing their own lives. Our men have chopped and picked cotton, worked in fields and factories, and labored by the sweat of their brows to provide for their wives and children. While it was our mothers who prepared the food and preserved the food, it was our fathers who kept the food on the table by one means or another. Our men have set examples for their children in strength and manliness. They have shown their sons what it means to do an honest day's work and given their daughters an image of what to look for in a husband. However, today the image of the African-American man is fractured. Each succeeding generation of men seems to lose a few more qualities that have historically defined our men. Instead of protectors of our children, there is a generation of men in which the overwhelming majority don't even know who their children are. There are a growing number of men in our generation that provide for their children by court order and leave their wives, ex-wives, girlfriends, and their baby mamas to provide for their children the best way they know how. In the past, it was our men who were the graduates and scholars. It was our men who went off to college and lead our efforts. Too many in this generation have just become my baby's daddy or have stopped being men altogether. Turning away from heterosexuality and reverting to homosexual lifestyles. The absentee father, the Adam and Jerome man and the overly Feminine men have changed the playing field for our families. This has hastened a call in this generation for mighty men. Mighty men who must rekindle the image of manhood of our history, avoiding the mistakes of the past and cultivating new efforts to restore the strength and reputations of the black man. As Christians, we know that God has blessed godly men of all generations. We trust God to bless the men of our families to provide, protect, and secure us with the help of God. Those who achieve this goal will earn the favor of God and will be remembered by all of us as mighty men. And if we look at our text this morning, it focuses on the short reign of King Jotham, who was of Judah, whose lifestyle and character was described of that of a mighty man. Jotham was the son of Uzzah, king of Judah. He is now one of the few biblical characters in which there is no record of any negative activity. 
When we look at biblical figures like David, who scriptures refer to as a man after God's own heart, you notice some heavy flaws, especially when it came to women. You can recall the story of David's missteps with Bathsheba. What about Samson, who had a Delilah dilemma? What about Abraham, who lied about his wife, and Adam, who sinned in the garden? When it comes to Jotham, however, nothing is written negatively about him. For 16 years, he ruled Judah. During his reign, he secured its cities and protected the nation from its enemies and ruled in the fear of the Lord. In the course of his reign, Jotham became a mighty man in the sight of the people and of his adversaries. And let me just pause here for a moment to mention that it is one thing to be viewed as a mighty man from the people that love you. But it's a whole different thing when you are viewed as a mighty man in the face of your enemies. Viewed as a mighty man in front of people that don't like you. Viewed as a mighty man in front of people that talk about you. Viewed as a mighty man in front of the people that wish ill for you. Jotham is described as a man who imitated his father's best traits and rejected his mistakes. Let me say that again. This is a man who imitated his father's best traits and rejected his mistakes. When you look at the scriptures and it's, when it speaks about Jotham, it uses the word how be it in the text and it explains how he continued the good works of his father but did not continue his habits of entering the temple of the Lord, which was restricted to certain members of the clergy of his time. Jotham imitated his father's strengths, and so should we. We must look to our fathers and our grandfathers and learn about them. Imitate everything that's good about them. Find things that are strong and virtuous, but we must reject and move past their mistakes. In verse 6 of the scripture, the text notes an important phrase. The word of God says that he became mighty. It indicates that Jotham was not mighty because he became king. But he subsequently became mighty in the eyes of the people because of his acts. A woman doesn't consider a man a mighty man because he can yell or fight or beat on her. A man becomes mighty before the eyes of his wife and children when they see him in action doing the will of the Lord. When the family faces a financial crisis and the father takes charge and steers the family clear with difficult decisions and actions, he becomes a mighty man in their sight. When the family faces death or sickness or attack and the father acts to unify and encourage and strengthen the family, in its weakest hour, he becomes a mighty man. When everyone seems to step down and he steps up, that's when a man becomes a mighty man in the sight of his family. My brothers and my sisters, we should note that every mighty man serves a mighty God. I say it again. Every mighty man serves a mighty God. Verse 6 of this text tells us the reason why Jotham was so successful in his life. It tells us that he was successful because he prepared his way before the Lord. 
The more Jotham let God use him, the mightier he became. He shifted from being simply a good man to being a mighty man before the Lord. I want you to know this morning there is a difference between a good man and a mighty man. A good man may love his wife and take care of his children, but that does not take, that does not make him a mighty man. A good man may protect his wife and children and secure their future, but that does not make him a mighty man. A good man may be a fine, upstanding citizen in the community, community with a noteworthy reputation, but that does not make him a mighty man. A good man may be religious and do good things, but that still does not make him a mighty man. A good man may go to church and participate in worship. Pay tithes, be a deacon and serve, but that does not make him a mighty man. A good man may obey the laws of the land and pay his taxes, but every man who obeys the law and pays his taxes is not necessarily a mighty man. How do we know this? Jacob was a good man. He prospered with material wealth and became respected as a man with a, a head for business. But one night he wrestled with the Lord and refused to let him go. From that night forward, he became a mighty man because he prepared his way before the Lord and placed his life in godly hands. David was a good man. He was a great leader and a military strategist. But one day he realized his own vulnerability and said, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. That day he became a mighty man because he humbled himself before the Lord his God and put himself in God's hand. A mighty man is a powerful man because God can use him. A mighty man is an influential man because God can control him. Is there anybody in the house this morning? A mighty man is an effective man because God can direct his path. A mighty man is a man whose savior is Jesus Christ. A mighty man is a man whose foundational principle comes from the word of God and not just what he sees on TV. A mighty man is a man whose guidance is the Holy Spirit. A mighty man is a man who can flee from sin. You don't remember the story of Joseph. When the man was tempted, the Bible didn't say he ran away. The Bible didn't say that he, 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 he just moved by osmosis. The Bible says when sin was knocking at Joseph's door, he fleed from sin. The man moved so fast, the woman still had piece of his clothes in her hand. A mighty man is a man who can run from sin. So if sin is knocking at your door, put on your track shoes and start running from sin. A mighty man is a man who knows when to get up and leave. A mighty man is a man who pursues godly character. Stop saying I'm just like this and I'll never change. Don't 
tell me that you can't change. Because if you can't change, that means that you serve a God who is not the one we serve in. You have to be able to change your character and allow it to reflect that character of God. Stop being so angry. It's mighty quiet. Stop being so messy, men. Stop lying, men. You know, there's, a, there's some attributes that we like to uh, 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 put towards women. You messy too. Stop cheating. I'm coming down your street today. My brothers, it's time to reflect the character of God. Stop being so impatient. Stop being so unmoved. Start being chaste. Come on, my brother. Not everything that's open is for you to go in. coming down your street today and if you can't provide step to the side I'm coming down your street and I ain't scared of you neither because I'm standing on the promises of God it is time my brothers and sisters that our men stop being women. I said it. Come sue me if you want to. God called you to be Adam and not Eve. All it is is sin. All it is is sin. I'm going to call it like I see it. God called you to be a man. How did I know that? When the doctor took you out of your mother's womb, all he said was, ma'am, it's a boy. From that declar declaration until now, you have been called to be a mighty man. Not anything else. I don't know. I don't care what any BA player says. I'm coming down anybody's street today. Challenge me if you want to, but open your word before you come to me. You have been called to be a mighty man. Not a she-man. Not anything else but a mighty man of God. I'm not insensitive. I'm being biblical. I'll call sickness, sickness. Go see a psychiatrist. You have been called to reflect God's character. And when you decide, I, I want you to see how deep this is. When you've decided, I'm going to stay on this for a minute. When you've decided that how God made you is not enough, you have told God that he has made a mistake. You didn't even look at it like that, did you? When you go for augmentations, when you go for changes to your body that is not medically needed, hear me clearly. You are telling God to his face, sir, you lack the ability to create. You are imperfect in your godship. 
You don't know how to make a man, but I'll show you how to do it. Are you with me this morning? I'm going to call it like I see it because I'm sick of the media. I'm sick of Facebook and I'm sick of Instagram. Sick of it. TikTok, Snapchat, all of it. Because we have allowed social media to tell you how to live your life. You let the news tell you how to live your life. Where were they when you were born? Where were they when you were conceived? Let me go a little deeper in the word. Where were they before the foundations of the world? When God in his infinite wisdom thought it was great in his mind to make you. Where were they? You going to let people who are created beings tell you how you should be made in the image of God? Something wrong with this world. I must say it. Something wrong with this world. And it is up to us who are believers to get up, stop watching, and get up and say something. We just want to sit back, well, I'll just be happy with Jesus alone. All right. Last time I checked, one of the greatest activists of this world came down and sat by a well I said, um, get me some water. You don't remember that? And did Jesus not tell this woman all her business? I said, you married. But the one you with ain't yours. When we going to get up and start talking truth? And mind you, I'm not asking you to go be messy and start louding people out on Facebook. Because Jesus did not take this woman into the middle of town and start telling all her business. Because it was he and her. Because that's biblical. The Bible says you got problems with somebody. You need to go straight to them and straighten it out. Jesus did not embarrass this woman. He said, listen, what you doing ain't right. Get it together. And from that day on, that woman became an evangelist. And got the whole city to come see this man. Where is your witness? Brothers. Because y'all keep leaving it to the women. And that's all right. Never said the women can't do it. But where are you? You you can't be absent everywhere. Somebody will catch that later. You're absent at home, you're absent on the job, you're absent with your children, you're absent. Now you want to come to church and be absent. Get a grip before Jesus get one on you. This is a warning. God can use what he don't have. God cannot use what he don't have if you've not submitted your life to him, submitted your plans to him. How you expect him to move in your life? Or are you too busy waiting for the IRS check to come on in so you can solve your own problems? Still waiting for that date, huh? I'm coming down your street today. You want to talk about a mighty man. A mighty man is responsible. Someone who's going to take care of his business. Stop relying on your mama. Her job was to bring you in the world, raise you in the fear and the admonition of the Lord, and that's it. That's all. Come up out of mama's house. You're 40 years old. Get out. You ain't saving for no house. Get out. (laughs) 
Your children don't even know you as daddy because grandma's too busy raising your children. I'm coming down your street. We are tired. My wife and I who are working with students every day. Sick and tired of having to deal with children who are uncouth. Unrestrained. I got some educators over there that know exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't know how bad it is at people's house, go to somebody's school. We are here raising other people's children every day, trying to teach them what mama couldn't do and because daddy's not there. I had a student ask me two weeks ago, Mr. Adams, what's a friends with benefits? I'm telling you like I hear it. Too many of our parents are allowing social media to raise their children and then wonder why they act as wild as they do. Take away the iPads. Take away the cell phones. Snatch out the computer and tell them to go read a book. I got students who don't even know how to open a dictionary and look up a word because it's so easy now. They can go up to the computer and tap it and say, hey, Google, how do you spell architect? But let the internet, the internet be down that day. They will lose their minds. Talking about I'm bored. They don't know how to do anything else because there's no father in the home to show them how to go outside and play some basketball and go and play some football. All they know is Fortnite. You don't even know what that is. Roblox, Struzan, all of that. YouTube, TikTok, they have it all. It's amazing. It's amazing how much we've allowed the, 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 the world to raise our children that if I were to give an iPad to every child in here, you wouldn't hear them for hours until the battery is dead. Where are we going? Because if the men in this generation aren't raising these boys now, what's going to happen in the next generation? We are having children now that have no sense. My robot, my Roomba got more sense than most of these kids now. Because my Roomba don't run into furniture. My Roomba don't go outside without permission. Matter of fact, my Roomba don't start till I tell it to. But tell one of these kids to go sit down somewhere and watch them give you one of them looks. Who you talking to? It couldn't be me. But we got so scared by the government. Oh, we can't discipline our kids. That's a lie. Take me to jail. You can lock me up. But I tell you one thing. By the time I'm done with little Johnny, you ain't going to be able to lock him up. You can take me. I'll be the sacrificial lamb. But I'm going to discipline my child. My child is going to have a future, and I don't care how come hell or high water, my child going to have some sense. You think I'm a bad parent? You come raise little Johnny. 
Are you with me this morning? We're living in a society that just tells us what to do. You know what? It's time to take back our households. It's far due and overdue. Brothers, where are you? Where? You at somebody else's house? I'm coming down your street. You'd rather raise somebody else's kids, but you don't want to be with yours. Why don't you do a two for one since you want to be over there? I need you to raise your kids. If you were strong enough to lie down and last all night long, then I need you to get up and stand up to your responsibilities. I'm going to call it like I'm saying. I'm sorry if it's a little X-rated for you. But it ain't too X-rated when you're watching Maury and say, girl, that, that, that stuff is crazy, ain't it? You watch it on TV, but it's too much for the church. You watch Maury, oh, now who the baby daddy is, is on? And when you see who the baby daddy, who is on there? Us. Us. I'm going to call it like I see it. It's us. I don't care if it's scripted. I don't care if it's fake. I don't care what you think about it. It don't look good. How you 20 daddies in and still don't know who the baby daddy is? If you do the math, you... you you couldn't calculate how many people in this short period of time you up to 20 and you still don't know? Are you with me this morning? This is where we are in the society because people don't have fathers anymore. The father figure is gone. Where are the responsible men? Where are you? Where are the mighty men that are humble? We are living in a generation where people are so materialistic, they don't even know what the word humble means. Where are the mighty men who are honest? Some men don't even have a straight bone in their body. Where are the honest men? Where is the mighty man that is forgiving, able to forgive like Jesus did? You can't forgive others, but you expect Jesus to forgive you. The lady's going to holler at this one. Where is the man that is loyal? One is never enough, apparently. Where are the mighty men who are loyal? We've, we've gotten to this world of options and choices. And, and I'm, Pastor, you're going you to have to pray for me this one. Uh, uh, we're living in a world where it's okay to be aside anything. Side piece, side thing, side leg, side all of that. All of that. We are living in a world where we have socially made it acceptable to be a side piece. Where are the men being loyal? I'll tell you where they are. What I've realized in life <clears throat> is that if you give a man a menu, he will take all that he can get. I'm talking to you ladies. If 
you give the man a menu, he will order everything he can get. So I'm going to say two things to you. If he can afford it, he'll buy it. So stop selling it. And for those of you, for those of you or those who you know are like thrift stores, stop giving it away. Are you with me this morning? I'm coming down everybody's street today. Because if it's free, they will take all that you have. And then what is left for the husband that you want? Ah. I'm coming down your street. You want to know where the loyal men are? If there are options and their lives are not committed to Jesus Christ, they will take the options. So stop being an option. Stop being an option. Where are the mighty men that are patient? One of the reasons why we have. I felt that. I felt that so spiritually. He like, I'm right here. <laughs> I ain't even mad at him. You go on, Sheridan. That's right. Where are the men like Sheridan that are patient? Let me, let me tell you something, ladies. Ladies. There are reasons why there are baby fathers. Are you with me? Some men are not patient for marriage. Are, are you with me? We need men that are patient. That means you need to help them sometimes. Oh, y'all got quiet on me there. Brothers need some help sometime because society has made it the norm. You have to make it the unnorm in your house. As for me and my house, we, I don't know what you do at your house, but we don't do that here. You have to set boundaries, and I don't want you to feel that I am attacking the ladies because I'm talking to the brothers, but I'm soliciting some help. There are some men, not all men, some men that don't have self-control, that are not patient. You going to have to help them along the way. Do you know how you can help them? Say no! I'm not asking you to do anything heavy. I'm not asking you to open no jars. I'm actually asking you to close some things. <laughs> this store is for marriage only. You can't get in unless you put a ring on it. Are you with me? Sometimes you got to get on your Beyonce and say, if you like it, put a ring on it. Are you with me? Brothers, have some restraint. I ain't just on the ladies. Brothers, have some restraint. You need it. Because I've worked in the foster care system. I know what it's like to, to, to service children who don't know where their parents are. The state took them away because their parents wasn't doing what they were supposed to do. Parents who were too young to make a, a, a rational decision, they were just out there doing what they thought was right. And now they have a problem. My brothers and sisters, it's time for our men to get it right. It is time. I'm, I'm, I'm about to. 
We need mighty men who will love his wife as his own body. Are you with me? We need mighty men who trains and nurtures their children. Mighty men who reaches out as role models in his church and in his community. Too many times we have in too many events and all we see is women, and that's all right. The women, we love y'all, but where are the brothers? When I was coming up, some of the most influential men in my, fam in, 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 in my, in my life were not my family. They were church brothers. There was a brother who would come and shake my hand off every Sabbath morning. He would just shake it and shake it and shake it some more. My mother would look at him, you're going to break the boy's arm. But what he was trying to teach me is that it's important to shake a man's hand when you see him. The man was teaching me respect. Where are the brothers to be an example for our young men? Reason why we have so many absentee fathers now is because their fathers were too absentee. And what they were doing was they were learning in reverse. Instead of all the good qualities of a father that they should have been nurturing and, and growing from, they were learning from absenteeism. Where are the mighty men? Well, I'm tired of asking for them. If we don't have any, we go grow some. It's that time here at Goshen. Pastor, can I come down one more street? I need permission because I don't want a board meeting after this. And I don't mean from him, I mean from y'all. So I'm going to say it like I feel it. I am tired of coming to events at this church and only see women around. Women having to pick up tables and clean up after people. I'm tired of it. And I'm going to say it like I see it. It is time for us to stand up and be men. And stop treating the women as servants. Why? Because when God made man, the very first thing that God asked man to do was trim and keep the garden. What does that mean? That was when, before God could create woman, God said, you need to go clean up. It ain't no woman's job to clean up. Matter of fact, it's our, all of our responsibilities. Matter of fact, look at the word of God. Woman was created as a help me. She can't help you if you're not doing nothing. I'm telling you like I see it. They are our help, and they can't help you if you're not doing what you're supposed to do. Matter of fact, you're supposed to be carrying the full load, and here she comes to come lighten the load, not take the load away. It's time. It's time, and I'm starting with me. My dear, I will be taking out the garbage from now on. It starts with me. It would, be, it would be hypocritical for me to stand up here and call everybody else out. I'm going to call myself out first. Ah, honey, I'll be cooking some more. It's time. Because what I've realized, too, in this society, there is a... a, a, a series of events that are happening and what we're seeing in our community, in our community, is that women are realizing that these good-for-nothing men can be replaced. I'm talking in the world and in the church. 
Are you with me? And so now we need to get it right. Not at the threat of being replaced. But get it right because God called us to be right. So if you're like me and need to get right and you're a brother, could you please stand so we can pray? Because I don't want to be held responsible by the heavenly court being accused of not living up to the standard that Jesus Christ himself set for all of us. Now, if you want to take a step further and say, listen, I just need some help. I need some tutoring on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I need some accountability. I need, would you come down to the altar? I mean that figuratively. I don't mean that literally. I mean that figuratively. You need some male influences around you. Would you come down to the altar? Because I want to pray. And the pastor wants to pray. And we all need to pray. And we're going to do something very different today. I need all the brothers to come down as much as possible. And this is what I need to happen. Because this is a community problem, not just a men problem. Are you with me? I need the brothers to come down. And I want the ladies to come. And I want you to lay hands on these brothers. Because if we're going to change... We need a little help. And the best thing you can do for a struggling brother is not cuss him out. Not nag, not yell, not scream, not hoop, not holler, none of that. You know what we need? Somebody say it. This is Goshen. We need what? Prayer. Prayer. What do we need? Prayer. Your husband not doing right? Stop yelling at him. Get on your knees. I guarantee you it'll confuse them. Your son is not doing right. Stop yelling at him. Get on your knees. Because what I've realized, ladies, ladies, can I give you a secret? There are some things you can't fix. There are some things you will never be able to fix. But I'm so glad that we serve a God who can fix all of our problems. So we need you sometimes to be the mediator. Get down on your knees and start praying for that man that ain't doing right. And I guarantee you, you'll see a change. Pastor. Would you touch somebody? And if you're not up front, would you stretch your hands out to the front? Heavenly Father, we come before you today, men, we want to be mighty men. We know that the only way we can be mighty men is by your spirit being poured out in us. God, we ask that you'll forgive us for shirking our responsibilities. We ask God that you'll have mercy upon us and try us one more time. Give us another chance, Father, to be open to your spirit. So in the mighty name of Jesus, right now, I pray. I pray for a special anointing in all of our men that is standing here. I pray, God, that you will anoint them. I pray, God, that you will set them apart. I pray, God, that they will walk in their purpose to be mighty men of valor. Oh, Heavenly Father, you are calling men, young men, old men, men that are strong, men that will stand up as a needle to the pole, men that will not shrink by God. And so right now, they're standing here consecrating themselves to you. So I pray that you'll set them apart for your service. I want to thank you for them. And God, there's some young man here that needs mentorship, some young man that needs you to do something extra for them. 
Lord, I pray that they will know that the men of Goshen is here ready to mentor, ready to stand strong with them. And I pray that they know that the women of Goshen is there to, to nurture and to, to be there for them. God, we need this so much in this generation and at this time. And I know, Father, that's what you want most of all. That's what you want from us. So anoint us, I pray. Anoint these men, I pray. Appoint them, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you, mighty man. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I want to thank Pastor Casey for a powerful message. Amen. And our men, we are now charged to be mighty, mighty men of alloy. This time, I'm, I'm honored again to have this mass choir share another item of music with us.
offering is an act of worship. So when we come together to give back to God what he has given to us, it's an act of worship. What I mean, we ought to get just excited. Uh, when we're in church and this praise team is singing or the choir is singing, we ought to get just as excited when it's time to give back to God what God has loaned to us. The Bible declares in Genesis chapter 4, verse 4, And Abel bought the best, the choicest parts of the firstborn of his flock, and their fat portion. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. But the Bible declares that you ought to bring your best. Not the pennies. Your best. Maybe it's a hundred dollar bill. But your best. Bring your best to God. And God will give you his best. So as we worship an offering, this is giving time. I want to invite our young men, deacons, to come forward. And when you bring something, it doesn't mean you sit in your seat. It means you get up and you bring an offering. So as the, as the praise team lifts us, give another song, a worship song. I want something so that people can get excited and start bringing an offering to God. So give us something that will get them excited. I'm going to pray and then it's time to give. Let us pray. Father in heaven, as we give, we want to thank you for the opportunity that we can give. Lord, we just bring back to you what you have given to us in tithe and offering. You said in your word, will a man rob God? And if you had robbed God, we have robbed even this whole nation. Father, in your word, say that we are cursed with a curse because of our selfish hearts. We don't want to be selfish. We don't want to be cursed. So we want to give to you what you have given to us in tithes and offerings. So bless the givers. Bless those that don't have to give. Bless those who have to give but just don't want to give. God, I pray that the Holy Spirit will just move in this place as we worship you in giving. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It's time to worship in giving. Makes no difference what you're going through. You're going to make it. God's going to see you through. So hold your head up. Put a smile on your face. This is another test. It won't last always. Get ready. Get ready. For your blessing. For your blessing. Get ready. Get ready. For your miracle. For your miracle. Get ready. Get ready. For your blessing. For your blessing. Get ready. Get ready. For your miracle. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. If you believe it, just say God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Lift your hands and receive it. Just say God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Decree and declare it by faith. Just say God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Oh, we say God's got a blessing. 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 With your name on it. With your name on it. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Oh, God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With your name on it. 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 With your name on it, 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 with your name on it. I'm so glad that you came today. I'm so glad that we were you worship with us today. 
And I am so glad for the Oakdale Covenant Church, for them coming, their choir coming. It's a Praise blessing. We just want to thank them again, and we want to thank the director for just leaning all of us together. Just want you to know that uh, it is always a blessing when we can worship together. Had an opportunity sometime last year when we worship. End of the year, we worship at Oakdale Church, my wife and I, and we surely had a great time. So we just so want to, we want to thank you for worshiping with us today, both uh, Goshen Praise Team and Goshen Ensemble getting together. You know, it's amazing. If you can get together in the last minute and pull something off so great, you know it's nothing but God. And I just imagine when we get to heaven, those that can't sing, that learn how to sing somewhere between the transition from earth to heaven. I believe that God is going to do something and is going to tweak our voices and there we're going to have this massive heavenly choir. And, and it's going to be it's going to be something else when we all get together within heaven and we're singing of the grace and the mighty power of God. Just want you to know that uh, Oakdale, they're dropping, they're dropping a their first digital album uh, next next Saturday night, and we just wanna we wanna support their album and what they're doing. I guess we'll get more information how we can get and we can be a part of that and listen to what they have what they're gonna be uh, dropping an album next next Saturday night. And I am so glad. Blessings on the choir and blessings on what they're doing. We want you to know that today we have lunch prepared for those of you who are going to stay by. And this afternoon at 5, five o'clock, we'll begin our afternoon program. We're going to laugh our way to a better life. It's, it's going to be a great time, so I want to encourage you to come back, to stay, invite people. Uh, this place is going to be a pack house. This is going to be a pack house. And so we ask that you will come and that you would, you would support what we're doing. It's a free event. You should have been saying amen. But since you didn't say amen, I want you to know that it's not a free event. We're just going to let you in free, but then when you come in free, we will collect an offering from you. Amen. Amen. So, but don't let it scare you. Come anyway, because, you know, laughter is a good medicine, and it really, it really enlightens the soul. It really lifts the spirit. So we want to invite you to come back, and let's have a good time as uh, D. Rock and, and his guests come, um, just lifts us up with laughter. May God bless you. I'm so glad again that you worship with us. I'm so glad for our online guests. We just want to thank you for your worship, worshiping here with us. I want to thank you for everything that you allow the Holy Spirit to do in your life today. And I don't know about you, but I sure had a good time with God. Amen. Let me say that again. I don't know about you. But I had a good time with the Lord. But then again, I am not you. It doesn't take much for me to have a good time with the Lord. And whenever I have a good time with the Lord, I got to let somebody know that I had a good time with Jesus. So I want you to come back this afternoon. Not only that, but we invite you to worship with us next week as we close off our Black History Celebration. May God bless you. I'm sorry, but because we're on earth, everything good must come to an end. Could we stand for a benediction, please? Oh, Father, we're so thankful. Truly, you came and you blessed us. You gave us a hearty spiritual meal this morning. Now, as we leave your house, we ask your blessing on this physical food we are about to eat. And then, Father, we ask that you bring us back safely at that appointed time. 
where we'll worship and praise you again. In Jesus' name we pray and the church say, Amen. I'm living in the overflow. I'm living in the overflow. Sing everything I touch will grow. Everything I touch will grow. Sing I'm living in the overflow. I'm living in the overflow. Sing everything I touch will grow. And everything I touch will grow. Say I'm healthy. I'm healthy. I'm wealthy. I'm wealthy. I'm, wealthy. I'm living in the overflow. I'm living in the overflow. Hey, I'm living in the overflow. I'm living in the overflow. Sing it, everything I touch will grow. Everything I touch will grow. Hey, sing I'm healthy. I'm healthy. I'm wealthy. 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 I'm wealthy.